Senator Chuck Grassley torched President Biden for high inflation on the Senate floor Wednesday. Inflation hit a 40-year high in June. An August CPI report revealed U.S. annual inflation stands at 8.3 percent. Grassley said, quote, I think you all might remember when the Biden administration's so-called experts claimed that inflation was transitory. It ended up they couldn't have been more wrong by using that word. In 2021, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said she believed inflation was, quote, transitory. On its feet, I yield the floor. Senator from Iowa. <clears throat> I think you all might remember when the Biden administration's so-called experts claimed that inflation was transitory. It ended up they couldn't have been more wrong than by making that, using that word. Since President Biden took office, Iowans have seen prices rise 13.7%. That adds an extra $666 to their monthly budget. Couple that with falling real wages, Iowans have been strapped very thin. This combination of rising prices and falling real wages has hit rural Iowa communities particularly hard. As a result, according to a report issued by Iowa State University, the disposable income of rural Iowans fell 33% over the past 12 months alone. It's no wonder then that the high cost of living is the number one concern that I hear about from Iowans as I travel all of our 99 counties. However, here in D.C., and remember, D.C. is an island surrounded by reality. Here in this town, the primary concern of President Biden and congressional Democrats has been enacting their very partisan agenda. They have refused to work with Republicans on sensible policies to tame inflation and provide targeted relief in the process of doing that, they, they haven't even followed the good advice of their own brethren. And I'll use Larry Summers as an example, that Harvard professor, former Secretary of Treasury. He said way back in January, before this president was sworn in, that the economy was turned around. Don't spend any more money or you're going to have inflation. And immediately within 60 days, days of being in office, this new president and this new Congress passed a $2 trillion appropriation bill to feed the fires of inflation. So instead of taming inflation, they rebranded the reckless tax and spending spree that they had pursued for more than a year as a bill recently passed called the Inflation Reduction Act, which I call the Inflation Enhancement Act. Never mind that outside experts uniformly concluded the bill's hodgepodge of Green New Deals and the subsidies that go with that program and the tax hikes would do nothing to address inflation today. Of course, if you want to stop inflation now caused by excessive government spending, the first thing you should do is stop spending. Or another way you can say it, and common sense dictates this, when you're in a hole, quit digging. Instead, Democrats doubled down with big government spending and coupled it with job-killing tax hikes. The National Association of Manufacturers said it would lose about 217,000 jobs. Democrats' policy decisions made even less sense given only a week before we learned our economy had shrunk for two straight quarters, indicating recession. And everyone knows 
as President Obama once said, and this seems to be the third term of the Obama presidency, but this is what he said when he was actually president, quote, the last thing you want to do is to raise taxes in the middle of recession. And yet it was done in that bill in August by $300 billion, more than $300 billion. The last thing our economy needed was another tax and spending spree, but Democrats just couldn't let go of their wish list. What's more, in light of hypocrisy, at the height of hypocrisy, Democrats touted the Inflation Reduction Act as an example of fiscal responsibility. Yet the supposed savings they claim will result from the bill was then immediately dwarfed in just one day of actions by President Biden's unilateral student loan announcement, which will cost American taxpayers at least $500 billion, and some people are saying it could cost up to $1 trillion. When President Biden announced that he was wiping out $10,000 to $20,000 of student loan debt for people making as much as $150,000, or $250,000 for a household, that's like that likely illegal action will send the bill for this student loan giveaway to Americans who did not attend college or people that graduated from college already paying off their college expenses. And at the same time, it's going to fuel the fires of inflation. So much then for the lip service about deficit reduction and inflation. But we now know that that inflation was not tran transitory. It's persistent. Iowans are sick and tired of paying the price for the failures of this Biden economy. I yield the floor and I suggest the absence of a floor. Clerk, call the roll. Ms. Baldwin.